hello and welcome to After the Sermon of Bethany podcast, where we have the privilege of digging deeper into our Sunday messages. I am Tammy DeLau, and today I'm joined with Pastor David Baxley and Pastor Steve Musto. We have been doing a little mini series on the temptations of Jesus. Yeah. And so I feel like you guys are going to quiz me now. I'm going to tell you what I think I've heard you say. Okay. And I'm glad you don't have like a (laughs) porn or a buzzer that you can blow. So we come to, we, we really need to go back to Matthew 3 because we need to see Jesus being baptized yeah. and God saying, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. So that's kind of a nice affirmation. I think of my mom and when she introduces me to her favorite waitress, she's proud of me and yeah. that, that's cool. I know that I'm loved. So, so Jesus knew that. So he goes into the wilderness led by the Holy Spirit, not just, you know, on his own accord. And he doesn't eat for 40 days. So he is hungry. He's hangry. He's tired. Yeah. And Satan appears and he says, Hey, turn, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And we don't even know that that would have necessarily been wrong because we don't know the conversation he had with the Holy Spirit. But the language you've been using, both of you have been using these last couple of weeks is temptation. The temptations are real. We think he's God, Mm -hmm. Jesus. So it's like, well, it didn't really matter. He was going to pass the test, but no, they would have been truly temptations designed specifically to get him to trip up. And so the temptation was do this. You, you have the power to do it, be self-dependent, but passing the test is Jesus was God dependent. So yeah. that's the first temptation. Did I miss anything? You think I, that, I, you, I think you, okay. I think you got it. Okay. All right. So your week last week. Yep. Okay. The next temptation goes into the temple, says the same thing. If you are the son of God, yeah. jump from here. Mm-hmm. And then he quotes a verse that says, I think it was Psalms 91. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm, I'm impressed guys. I know that I know my yeah. stuff. <laughs> so, so, no. um, so he jumps yep. or he tells him to jump yep. because this Bible verse is saying, God will not let anything happen. Mm-hmm. So the temptation is Jesus is feeling tired. He's mis- probably fellowship is different specifically from the beginning you know, yeah, of, of our yeah. time. And so he maybe needs some reassurance, you know, like wants to feel love, feel God's yeah. presence. Yes. So manipulate the situation so that you can experience God. And so our mm-hmm. temptation is not to manipulate, but to trust the, trust the Lord his, yeah. his, his plan. Trust is that, what, trust I, what God I has said and okay. who he says we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So why are we here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to lunch? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, just take this next one. Right there. Well, you My know goodness. what? This next temptation is so confuses me that I'm probably going to sit zipped t- and you guys are going to talk. So I'm, get, I'm getting my words in this time. So uh, some kind of don't even make sense because it's like all of the things. This next one, bow down to Satan. Even though yeah. I know we do it at the end of the day, you can go any two-year-old would be like, oh no, you don't do that. You right. don't bow. So why, mm. does that make, like, yeah, so, that's, that's a really good way of saying it. Yeah. So why? Like this, this one, I, I have wrestled all, mm. a lot of wrestle. So, well, the, so in, in I don't know if I'm going to say this this weekend, but it, it, you know, somewhere in my notes, it says um, that the temptation of Jesus, temptations of Jesus mm-hmm. are, um, temptations for Jesus because they're temptations to Jesus. Mm. Meaning, as you said last week, these are not shots in the dark. Right. That Satan is taking like, I don't know what works. Yeah. You guys got any ideas? Let's try this. Yeah. These are the these are the things targeted at who Satan believes Jesus is and what is most likely to work. Mm-hmm. There have to be his most potential le- vulnerable moment, at least yeah. dozens yeah. of temptations possible. Yeah. And so, yeah, what are his vulnerabilities mm-hmm. and what do I think will work? So these are legit mm-hmm. deals. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I'm in Matthew four, eight through 11. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, I will give you all these things if you will fall down and worship me. So we don't have, if you're the son of God, that part of his little repertoire has been pulled away. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Help me understand this. Yeah. (laughs) So in in Jesus reply is go away, Satan, for it is written, Mm -hmm. worship the Lord, your God and serve him, uh, serve only him. And then the devil left him and angels came and began to serve him. The Luke account Mm -hmm. says, um, 
Satan withdrew until a more opportune time or waiting for another time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he's not done. Yeah. Right. He's just retreating momentarily. Okay. So, um, mm. Yeah, how do you, how do I do this without preaching the message? Right. Uh, basically, <laughs> basically, here's what, and this is what's helpful. Um, you know, people who watch our podcast are like uh, folks in, in grow groups, grow group leaders, those who are looking to go a little bit deeper. So I want to make sure that we give them content that is is valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, we this whole temptation that uh, all three of these mm-hmm. goes back to the garden. This is all about the garden. Yeah. Okay. This is all about the first Adam. Mm-hmm. This is all about um, uh, how the problem of sin came into the world mm-hmm. to begin with. Mm-hmm. And so Satan is trying what always works. Yeah, This always works on humans. Jesus is human. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm going to make sure that this works. Mm-hmm. So that's what's happening. Okay. Satan, how do I... Okay, God is king. God is king over everything. Mm-hmm. Satan is like a governor of part of God's kingdom. He's got author- some authority. He's not mm-hmm. the regional manager. He's not the assistant regional manager. He's the assistant to, <laughs> to the, regional. the regional manager <laughs> okay. Okay. Of, of parts of God's kingdom. And that's like this spiritual kingdom mm-hmm. and, and physical kingdom. No, it's, we know... Um, when God built the world, Mm -hmm. all of our allegiance, all of our loyalty was Mm -hmm. to God. When Satan slithered in Mm -hmm. and the serpent injected the venom of Mm -hmm. sin into the world, um, uh, our allegiance switched. We chose, we, we switched Mm -hmm. sides. Mm -hmm. So our now, instead of like, look, look what happens in the garden we're alive. The humans are allied with God Mm -hmm. and Satan has to come in and convince them, be like, Hey, Hey, come with me. Come over here. I've got candy in the van. You know, like that's what they do. Whereas now the world we live in, it's Satan's world. We have to lure people away from Satan's world Mm, and like tempt them to come over to Christ. The Holy spirit has a work to do Mm -hmm. in order to do that. Whereas before sin, it was the opposite. And so Satan has authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what he's trying to do is to give, um, he's trying to circumvent for a reason, Mm -hmm. the work of people going back over to the side of God and the inevitable conclusion to the story. Because Genesis 3, when sin enters the world, what is pronounced upon Satan, what is his condemnation, so his judgment? That Jesus is going to crush his head. Yeah. So, which is so fun. Our grandchildren have a, a storybook where Jesus is called the snake crusher. Mm. If you want to hear a two-year-old say snake crusher, it is just oh. so cute. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so that's already in my notes. Snake yeah. crusher has already yeah, been in my notes. So okay. That's fun. Um, so yes, he's a snake crusher. So we learn about a snake, the snake crusher. Mm-hmm. Abraham comes along and says, out of your family line, God says, mm-hmm. um, there's going to be a snake crusher. Okay. Then David, Psalm, we read Psalm chapter mm-hmm. two. We read more about the, the snake crusher. Then we find out later that it's going to be from David's line. Isaiah paints the picture of the inevitable destruction of the, mm-hmm. the snake when the snake crusher is on the throne and people are streaming into the holy city and beating their mm-hmm. plowshares into you know, pruning hooks and, you know, whatever that passages in in Isaiah. So that's the conclusion. Mm -hmm. Satan doesn't want any of that to happen. He wants to continue to reign and rule his little part of, with his limited authority, Mm -hmm. because that's his, that's all he has. Mm -hmm. And that's better than nothing. Than nothing. Mm -hmm. Than eternal judgment. So if he can lure Jesus away from paying the price of our sin and winning us back into the world of, of Yahweh, Mm -hmm. then he can hold on to his power and authority. And the only way to do that is to get in the way of Jesus paying for the sin Mm -hmm. of the world. 
So there, we have an, we have a fascination an over fascination with the idea of Satan, <laughs> you know, Jesus going to the cross and Satan saying, yay, yeah, this happened. And then, Oh, I don't know what happened. Suddenly sin has been paid for and being uh, Satan may not have known what Jesus was doing, mm. but he's pretty smart. He, he, he knew that sin had to be atoned for. Mm-hmm. God is holy. God can't call Ali Ali income free mm-hmm. uh, to, to sinners just because he decides to. It has to be atoned for. Something has to because happen. Because he's just. Because he's just. Mm-hmm. So we don't know how much he knew, but we just know that he knows this is no good because this is the guy. This is the snake crusher. This is the one who God has sent mm-hmm. to ruin uh, my power and authority. Okay. Uh, but even more, I think on that is Satan was once with God. He was there in God's presence. He yeah. was worshiping. He was, he was, his allegiance was to the, to the rightful King. And at some point he decided he wanted to be King. And so he rejects God as King. He comes into God's creation and says, Hey, how about you reject God you as could, king too like and him. let me be your king? Everybody's doing right? it. Yeah. It'll yeah. make you feel good. <laughs> it, it, with the temptation of, and then I'll give you the things you really want. Right. It will make, you know, this is like God, you think God's, no, I, I'll give you what you really so want. So he's a really good salesman. Yeah. And he's coming in to, to end. But I wonder if that's also the temptation to Jesus is come over to my side. Because that's what Satan did in the garden. He said, mm. you're God's. He's your king. Come over to my side and let me be the Nobody king. Nobody tells me what to do. Yeah. And, 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 and my, listen, you'll have the knowledge person. of good and evil. You'll have whatever God has hidden from you. Now you'll get these things. Yeah. And, and now he's saying, but hey, Jesus, you come to my side too. Mm-hmm. You bow down and worship me just like I got Adam and Eve to submit to me. Just like I've gotten all these people to reject their rightful king and make me king. You do this too. Now everything is so much easier. Things are so much better. And Satan holds his position, not because he rightfully has it, but because everyone has given that to him in yeah. rejection of the rightful king. So the, the world that Satan rules is a world that is um, sold out to him. Mm-hmm. They have chosen him. Mm-hmm. By rejecting God, they continue to choose him. Mm -hmm. There are many, many people in the world who just live their lives and have no idea that what they're actually doing Mm -hmm. is living Mm -hmm. in Satan's kingdom. Mm -hmm. This is the matrix. Mm -hmm. They don't realize they haven't taken the Mm -hmm. red pill. Mm -hmm. So they don't realize that they're, uh, what, what life is really like. Mm -hmm. They don't realize what world they're in Mm -hmm. and they think they're just doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. So that's part of, Satan's ploy. Mm -hmm. Um, and what he really, what he wants Jesus to do and the, the, where the temptation is for Jesus is, you know, read Isaiah, the snake crusher goes to the throne, people stream into the Holy city. Mm -hmm. uh, All is set, right? It's a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Satan says, Oh, you want that? I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. You want, you want to rule and reign? Absolutely. You can rule and reign. I'll make sure that everybody, is loyal to you. To you. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, now, mm-hmm. there's no cure for sin. Mm-hmm. There's no reconciliation with God. Mm-hmm. But if the ultimate deal here, Jesus, is that you're going to sit on a throne, mm-hmm. well, we can make that happen. Yeah. Okay. Let's make that happen. And here's the temptation. No beating, mm-hmm. no cross, yeah. no being spit upon, mm-hmm. no being told that you are working for Satan Mm -hmm. when you are the author of life and no final God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. Yeah. No rejection, no rejection, no pain. And we may not know what's around the pike for us, but Jesus knew what was around the pike for him. Yeah. So, and chose. So, so that if you, if we are using your language again, the language would be the temptation to do it the easy way. Mm -hmm. And the test would be, sticking to God's plan. Yeah. Passing the test would be sticking to God's plan. And part of the lesson for our lives in, in this passage is understanding the easy way that is presented is never actually the easy way. God is not trying to wreck us. God is not trying to uh, make our lives miserable. Mm-hmm. There, <laughs> there is always, Satan is always, 
always in a rush. Mm -hmm. If there is a hurry, hurry, you have to do this right now, mm -hmm. chances are pretty good that is not God. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you are feeling the pressure of this has got to happen, it's got to happen right now, you have to do, I need you to make a decision. Like, okay. a, like a panic. God is not behind that. Mm -hmm. God moves slowly mm. to the point where it drives us crazy. The only thing God tells us to be quick to do is quick to obey him. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't, he doesn't say, you know, make decisions quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he doesn't. So Satan wants us to move f fast. Mm -hmm. That's part of the deal. Oh, you three years from now, after you've gone, after you suffered and gone to the, the cross and the whole thing, then mm -hmm. you can have the kingdom. Uh, let's hurry. Let's do it right now. So this is in our world. This is the draw. I think you mentioned this last week, David, we run across this all the time with people who are like, well, I know that I shouldn't be dating this person mm -hmm. yeah, or that I shouldn't marry this yeah. person, mm -hmm. but they're right. I mean, they, I mean, they came right into my life. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe it was God that sent yeah. them into my life yeah, right. and I was, I'm supposed to, I mean, they're right here. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'm not supposed to take that job, but it, mm -hmm. it, came up and it seems to fit me perfectly. Mm -hmm. Well, have you asked God about that? Well, <laughs> I mean, not really. Those are the kind of things that we, that we do. Let me, let me hurry and get the thing that I want. I want this thing. And that thing appears. Wow. What a coincidence <laughs> that that thing that I want the most has just appeared without having to do the difficult mm -hmm. work or of obeying God. Yeah. To get it. So uh, just building from that, one of the things that's coming to my mind right now is if last week's temptation, Jesus was um, being tempted to force God to prove his love to him. Yeah. Satan is in a place right now of saying, Jesus, you can have what you want, but you'll have to reject your love for your father. Who? Yeah. And, oh, that and, was good, David. And reject your love for your creation. Yeah. Because you will get to be their king. Yeah. But you're not going to sacrificially love them. Right. You're not going to give your life for them. The greatest act of love that we talked about last week won't happen. Yeah. So you reject your love for God. You reject for love for them, but you get to be king. Yes. Which is something rightfully he does want and yeah. should have. Right. But the cost is lovingly obeying his father yeah. and lovingly dying for his creation. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. And I, you know, I love about this passage. One of the things I love is that Jesus doesn't refute the theology. Mm. There's a theological thing behind all of this. Mm. Jesus can just go, hang on a second. Are you trying to give me the very thing that's going to be mine anyway? Mm -hmm. Like if I just wait for God's plan, I can have this, but it, he doesn't refute that. But not only going to be his, but ultimately it is his yeah. because he's God. Y yes. Okay. And this is where the, it's so confusing. <laughs> it, this is where it's confusing <laughs> yes. because um, yes, Jesus is God in human flesh. Mm -hmm. mm. That doesn't mean that um, as we know from scripture, um, he lays down the rights that are afforded him mm -hmm. in yeah. that moment. So he rejects time and time again when they're trying to make him king. Mm -hmm. So he is the king but they're going to try to make him king to anoint him king. And Jesus says, no, I'm not. Cause it's not time yet. Well, but not, and there's more than that too, because what was Jesus coming to do? And the book of Matthew echoes this over and over again. He was coming to bring a new kingdom. Like these kingdoms that Satan was offering him was actually not the kingdom that ultimately he is, he is coming to establish and rule over. Right. So there's, it's a substitute. It's, it's a, a substitute. shadow. Yes. It's a shadow yeah. Kingdom. It's a fake kingdom. It's yeah. a substitute to the true kingdom, but to get to, for God's kingdom to come and his will be done would be what Jesus comes to do would be something that begins at the cross, but we're still living in the building and coming of that kingdom. It's, it's, it's still coming and happening. And we're waiting for this moment that Isaiah speaks of. And so there's there, I mean, it's not just waiting three years for the cross and resurrection resurrection and then it's good. Yeah. There's a continual thing that we're still living in now waiting for the fullness of the true kingdom to come. Here's a false kingdom. You can have this now. Yeah. And, and aren't we, we're in that same temptation. 
Yeah. Isn't that that temptation? Like I can choose the kingdoms of this world around me, my own kingdom, my own job, my own home, the way I want it to be, mm-hmm. the, the way th- I want things to be. And everyone will see I'm great and I'm good and I'm successful versus God's kingdom, which is that upside down kingdom, which doesn't feed those things of my yeah. ego. And it's hard. And I actually have to give up myself out of love to God, give up myself out of love to everyone else, deny myself. I mean, these are all the things that actually bring about God's kingdom. Yeah. We don't want it either. No, I don't want to wash anybody's feet. I don't want to, ser- I, didn't, I want to lead. I don't want to serve anybody in order to lead. It's all of those things. Mm-hmm. So um, on that note, um, 2019, Kathy and I, it was uh, right after Easter and um, uh, we had a vacation scheduled in Florida. We're down in Florida and it's just the two of us. And uh, we just been praying like uh, things were, were things were getting growing increasingly uncomfortable where we, we were, we had been in um, South Carolina for almost nine years. It was, um, there were things just uh, going on at the church. There were things going on in us. Um, There's all kinds of just chaos. And as you know, um, often when you have been serving as a pastor for a long time, if you don't get a break, one of the things that you just get discouraged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I read again this week, it's like 45% of pastors are thinking of actively looking at leaving the ministry. Oh my goodness. Any, any given week. Okay. Um, at m- most of the job search, uh, job searches that happen, happen on Mondays for pastors. Because Sundays were so rough. Sundays were so bad. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, uh, and yeah, absolutely. It, it happens. And so- we're down there, we're going through all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, I go for a prayer walk mm. and I, and I'm walking around and I'm praying and I'm just saying to God, like, I don't, I don't know what you want me to do. Maybe I should just get out. Maybe I'm not good enough anymore. Maybe I'm, I mean, we've just taken so many punches. Um, our kids have taken punches. I just, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. Like I think, I think it might be done. And, um, you know, you guys know my love of automobiles <laughs> and, and the moment, um, this car drives by and it happens to be a, an, uh, probably a $250,000 car. Mm-hmm. Huh. And now I know that because I see it and I recognize what it is and it goes by and I, my brain processes it wow, that's a nice car. Mm -hmm. And clear as day into my mind is a voice that says, I'll give you that. Walk away. Mm. Walk away and I'll give you that. You can have that if you want it. Now I know the voice of my heavenly father. That is not the voice of my heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And I said, out loud on a sidewalk in the middle of Naples, Florida. Um, God, in this moment, I only desire what it is that you want for me. And I refuse to choose anything that is not from you. Um, But that temptation, do you want this? I do. Mm -hmm. I'd like to drive a $250,000 car. I know it doesn't mean anything to most people, but, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and there it is. And I'll give you this thing. And it's not just ambition. It's not just, I like nice things. It's more than that because it's tied in Jesus case. It's tied to what the mission. Mm-hmm. I'll give you this thing. How many pastors do we know who get confused? They, they start out on a really good, in a, on a good trajectory. Yeah. And somewhere along the way you go, wait, you did what? Yeah. You get, how did you get off? Yeah. Well, because you're doing spirit, spiritual things. It's kind of like part of the mission, mm. but you're trying to accomplish the mission in a way that is devoid of spiritual power. Mm. And that's mm. this. That's the passage. Yeah. Mm. Accomplish the mission. You get the throne. You get the kingdom. People will throw their, mm. their crowns at your feet mm. and you will reign and you will rule. Isn't that what you want? But what about the sin problem? What about my people? Who do? Mm. Oh yeah. Well, when they die, I get them. Mm. 
that's what Satan says when, when they die. I mean, they're yours as long as they live, but then they die, they go right to me mm-hmm. and I get them. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not the plan. Mm-hmm. And we have to be very careful that we only do mm-hmm. the plan that God has and not some uh, twisted version mm-hmm. of the plan. And I even think, and uh, as you were sharing that about pastors, and I think of different conversations I've had too with uh, with pastors. And you're like, wait a minute, how, where did that go wrong? Where did that switch? And and the same as in our lives, we'll just keep going. This example, though, it's when they miss who the real king is and what the real kingdom is. They want to form themselves as king. Yeah, their churches become their little kingdoms. Yeah, uh, we see this a lot. I mean, we see this corruption pastors falling away and where did it start when it became their kingdom yeah when it wasn't god's kingdom coming god's way and me submitting myself to god's kingdom uh it was when this could become my kingdom because i could accomplish it and yep it won't be god's kingdom but look i'm still ruling i'm big i'm powerful and we do this in our lives but i don't and and i think sometimes it's that yeah absolutely but sometimes, you know, I had a conversation not long ago with a pastor who um, has this vision and he presented this vision. We're going to mm-hmm. do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Okay. And one of the things I had to do was deliver a warning mm-hmm. about this part. Okay. You're, you're counting on this yeah. as part of the vision. I just want you to know, I have some knowledge about this. Be very careful about this, yeah, yeah. this part, because yeah. I'm telling you truth here. Could not care less. Mm, yeah. the, 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 the guy could not care any less about what I said, despite the fact that what I was telling him was the truth one. was right yeah. there in front of them. It was documentable. It was at the, his, yeah, but yeah, but the mission, the vision, yeah. I don't know that his heart is in the wrong place in the sense that he's like my kingdom. I think it's more like he's sold out to the, the plan. This is what it must be. And I, I'll do anything to accomplish this. And I, I there's disaster. <laughs> It, but it, it's the now narrow in the plan. It's the narrow vision though. Yeah. And that's what Satan was appealing to Jesus. But, you get to be king, but it's not the, it's not the complete picture. It's not the full story. It's not the great end result that God's wanted, but it looks so good. Right. It's, it's, it's almost there and it will still make you feel good. You're right. still going to be there in that place. And, and whether it's pastor or not, isn't that the yeah, that's counterfeit? What I think we need to, to say, I mean, you guys are speaking as pastors, but right. this is all of us. Yeah, I and, mean, this and, is the same trap. That's right. This is into. me in my life. This mm-hmm. is, this is still me and decisions I make in my home. Mm-hmm decisions of, you know, a house I may buy or things I may do or choices I make, it, you know, I think of Amy and I made it, when we were looking uh, for our first house, we had our dream. We knew we wanted and we're like, God, tell us. And he's like, you'll know it's the house when this is the exact number. And every house we went to, we just said, all right, God, we're going to offer that exact number, offer that exact number. And, but there were so many times when they came back with a counter offer, mm-hmm. I'm like, what's 5,000 more? Right. What's the big deal? Right. And it, and like, this seems like the most perfect thing. And God's like, that's not the one I have. That's not what I have. You're gonna have to wait. And we had to wait. It's going to be harder. It's going to be harder. Um, but, and I, I just, it's a little example, but it's that same, I think, uh, that we do in our lives. If we just make that one little compromise, we'll get what seems like the right thing yeah. instead of waiting and trusting God's way and method and plan to get us there. When we don't, the reason we don't, when, when we make decisions to, I'm just going to go ahead and do this thing, or I'm just, mm-hmm. um, it, it's not because in the moment we say, I am rejecting God and his kingdom and I am choosing the kingdom of Satan, bowing down to That's him. That's exactly right. That, it, that doesn't work. Yeah. That doesn't work on anybody. Yeah. What works is the subtlety. And this is, that's what this is. This is subtlety. Subtlety, yes. And in our lives, yes. The subtlety of, you know, I have prayed with so many people. I have prayed even in my own life, Mm. but God, if I don't do this, if I say no to this thing, if I let this person go, if I turn this thing off, if I, you know, whatever, Mm. then this won't happen because I don't see a path to the vision that I want through outside of this. Yeah, I don't see how many, you know, how many people I don't see a life, um, of, of joy and sustainability and whatever outside of, of having children. Mm-hmm. So, and God says, well, maybe I want you to do this, but maybe I don't. Mm-hmm. And if God says no, I, but, but 
that's where the joy is. So I'm, I'm going to keep pursuing that thing or I, but better yet. I'm not going to ask God what he wants. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to ask God if we should do mm-hmm. uh, pursue this any further. I'm just going to keep doing it because there's got to be something. And I'm afraid of what God is going to say mm-hmm. is what if he says no, and then I can't have that. Yeah. Kind of and what does that say about mm-hmm. what we believe to be true about God? I've done this so yeah. many times in my life. Yeah. And I have to go back and we confess. We don't believe he's a good guy. We don't believe he's we, good. No, we don't believe he's good. He's trying to keep good things from us. Again, back mm-hmm. to the garden. Oh, mm-hmm. you're not going to die. Mm-hmm. You'll know a good, you'll be like God. Mm-hmm. You'll run your own life. The, the self-actualized life mm-hmm. is what we all are looking for. I want to choose my own adventure. I want to choose every left and right turn. Mm-hmm. When I don't like it, I want to rewind the tape and go back and choose something else. So the, none, I can move None forward. of us like to be told what to do. But, you know, and, and yet building on that too, Steve, which I, you alluded to at the very beginning of this is uh, the temptation for Jesus was also was he could get it without having to suffer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the truth is the part of the thing we know about God is he even says, when you have tried, we're going to see this in James, when it's painful, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm doing something, mm-hmm. but I don't want it to be painful, God. Yeah. It, it, it's almost as if we actually know part of who God is mm. and we know that part of our, part of what God is going to do is a part of what he works in us is going to be painful, right? It's going to be hard. I don't want that part. So if I see a path to getting something that seems like it's going to be what I want without the pain, why would I want God's way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That seems silly. The one thing that we have on our side, if we have decades behind us is we have walked pain yeah. and we've held the Lord's hand and hindsight is 2020. 20. Mm-hmm. So I, I, and I want to be clear uh, that God's way is not always the way of pain. Not always. No, not always. That's, that's it, fair. That's a fair comment. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and because the opposite is sometimes true where it's like, why am I enduring so much pain? You know, doctor, it hurts when I do this. Mm-hmm. Well, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Why we're in pain because we've gotten ourselves into a situation mm-hmm, right. that God didn't want us in the first place. He's mm-hmm. like, I know you're suffering. Mm-hmm. I feel badly for you. Mm-hmm. You should not be in that situation. You should extract yourself from that situation <laughs> as soon as you possibly can. I don't want that for you. Mm-hmm. So pain can be an indicator mm-hmm. in some cases that we're in a place that we shouldn't be. So it's not always about hard. It's not God's way is not always that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Sometimes he, it does. The water just parts. Mm-hmm. It's it, what it is, is about walking with him, being close enough to him, being connected to his spirit every day. When we get away from his word, when we get away from worship of him, when we get away from uh, relationship with him. This is what we miss. We have got to be connected enough with God that we know, oh, he's in this. Mm-hmm. He's not in this part. He's in this part. I need to follow him. I need to follow hard after him. Mm-hmm. There are people though that are listening and going, well, God's never spoken to me. Like he's spoken to you. Yeah. And, um, I did not get a price when I was looking for my home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so your stories can be encouraging or they can also be really discouraging. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. God, God, um, speaks differently to all of us, yeah. just like we communicate with our children differently, mm-hmm. yeah. different children in different ways. Mm-hmm. And, um, so we've got to learn how God talks to us. Mm -hmm. And I would say this, if you don't know that, um, you need to know God better. Okay. Yeah. You need to pursue him harder. Yeah. That's what I would say. Cause I would, I don't know about Steve, but as I articulate even that situation with my house Mm -hmm. that I've been learning to walk with God closely 10, 12 years at that point in my life and had people in my life help me know how to just be communing with God. Yeah. It's not like that God does that every single time. Mm-hmm. Maybe that moment is that, but there's other senses or ways we see God or God speak to us in different yeah. ways. But as you said a minute ago, but it, it was a, it's a discipline of being with God. Yeah. And it's not in like in these next two weeks, I haven't been with God in five years, but next two weeks, God will all of a sudden show up and give my answer. It is a invested relationship mm-hmm of time with our heavenly father to which we learn to discern how he will speak to us. And we can then be confident as we've walked that journey. It, you won't get instant. Just, we won't get the instant. If if it's encouraging, I didn't learn how to do this and then become a pastor. I was a pastor for many years Mm. and then learned how God spoke best to me. And usually it's through his word. Yeah. 
I think the the class that I'm taking, we are specifically talking about being, and we are such doers, especially those of us in the ministry. There's a list a mile long of things yeah. that need to be done, but the challenge is we need to do out of our being with the Lord. And I think mm. one of the things the evil one uses is, I mean, I think of Jesus being up on this mountain looking down and it had to be a, a beautiful, so, something was alluring. So it, on top of granddad's bluff, you know, looking yeah. down, some, something yeah, he image. wanted. Um, we are so busy looking at that view that we don't even know what God wants us to, yeah. to do. We're not with him. So, yeah, which that's, that's hard. We need to, we need to slow down. That is for sure. Yeah. So. All right. This has been a fun series, guys. Yeah. Thank you. So new language for us, the tempting testing. And yeah. I am very thankful that our Lord passed the test, that we do benefit from that. So that yes, is a beautiful right. thing. Yep. We're starting a new series next week. It, we're going to march it for a while. Yep. We're going to be in James, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So for those of you who are listening and watching, if you want to work ahead, we'll be in James 1, 1 yeah. through 11. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us and yeah. thank you guys. Bye-bye. Yeah.